simple to play. Testing my skills on prize picks this season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Go to prizepicks.com slash WI and use code WI for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash WI, code WI. Marquette Hall of Famer Tony Smith here. You're listening to the home of Marquette Basketball. 94.5 ESPN is WKTI and WKTI HD Milwaukee. A locally owned Good Karma brand station. It's time for the best 60 minutes of your life. This is the Homer Hour. Broadcasting live from the Gruber Law Office's One Call That's All studio at the Avenue in downtown Milwaukee. Alongside former Packer Brian Balaga. Here's Emmy Award winner Homer. say nothing else the rest of the hour. People refuse to believe that, but it's true. The Packers are in the playoffs, and I want 59 minutes from Brian Bulaga, who's lived it, experienced it, and can better than anyone else tell us what the players must be feeling right now. The doctor of football, I know he watched this game twice. I don't even have to ask. Am I correct, doctor? Yep, got yep. my got my uh, tape in today. Got got to watch <laughs> it all, and uh, man, what a time to be! Yeah, alive and for everybody who thinks I mean, I have no belief that Brian Bulaga needs to watch it a second time. Football is not what he does. Football is his life. He can see it once and know everything that occurred, but he feels like he has to see it twice, which is fine. So take it away. Can you feel? Can you feel? 58 minutes and 32 seconds. I'm not sure I could do it by myself, but I I can certainly, I mean, watching that game yesterday and, and kind of the way it played out, obviously it started a little back and forth and, and things like that. The missed field goal, I mean, obviously put a bad taste in everyone's mouth early, but after that, man, it just felt like one-way traffic. And the performance by Jordan Love, 27 of 32, 316, two tutters, hit seven different receivers for over two catches. I mean, just phenomenal uh, distribution of the football yesterday. I believe you watched it and thought, I'm watching Aaron Rodgers. I'm watching a player at that level. Agree or not? Yeah, I mean, his performance was reminiscent. I mean, it just was. It just was. I mean, every time he threw it, you felt like it was getting completed. And that's just, that's phenomenal to, I mean, I was a part of that with Aaron Rodgers where every time you would drop back, you thought he'd be able to complete it or he would complete it. And sitting here on my couch watching it to have that feeling every time that he drops back that he's going to deliver a strike. I mean, it is an, an awesome feeling as a fan and a spectator to watch. Uh, offensive line against this great Bears defense. 111 yards rushing, only one sack given up. Montez Sweat taken out of the game by Zach Tom. Out of the game. Wasn't even a non-factor. Maybe had one tackle for a loss, um, but that's about it. I mean, just a dominating performance. And then on the flip side, not many people want to hear about it. You and I like to talk about it. Nine points allowed. Nine points allowed by that Packer defense and Joe Barry putting on a master class against an offense that was hot, the number one rushing offense in the NFL, what'd they rush for? Uh, I mean, what I can't even find it because it's such a small number. You don't need yards. to know the numbers. You saw the game. You know yeah. they took the, away. I was amazed they didn't run the ball at Jair all the time. I saw it a couple times. It seemed to work well, but I'm not the uh, play caller. You can be the judge of that. I mean – run the ball at Jair, that would, that would require you to get outside the tackle and, and, you know, beat the, the front seven, which they hardly ever did. Okay. I mean, 75, There's the answer. 75, yeah. 75 rushing yards against a team that was literally for the last probably five to six weeks dominating up front and doing whatever they wanted offensively. All uh, right. Enough of uh, this. 
I want to know what you had to feel knowing how the players felt making the playoffs. Tell us what I mean, it's like. I mean, I'm absolutely ecstatic for them. You know, as a former Green Bay Packer, I'm super proud of this group. Like, the the feeling that all the work and all the adversity that you go through throughout an NFL season, all the doubt coming into the season, all the unknowns that can take place through an NFL season, and you finally, the work that you put in, you get paid off and, and get a, a ticket into the tournament. And it's not relief because there's more work to be done, right? And you understand you're the seventh seed and you're going to go into a hostile environment and and do all that. But it's just that gratification of everything that you've been working for. It paid off because you're you're getting your chance to go to the playoff. And for the guys on this team, right, guys that we really didn't know much about, um, playing without guys that we did know about for a big chunk of the season, didn't didn't have a bunch of their big name starters to be able to do this and and get into the postseason, man. I, I the I, I can't even imagine the energy in that locker room after the game. I saw a couple guys on social media that looked like some cigars were being smoked. I mean, that's fantastic stuff. Um, just so I mean, it, it it's. It's so hard to talk about because in October, I thought there was no chance. There was no chance. I I, I was like, this this team can't come around this fast to get in to the playoffs. And they did. And Jordan Love plays at an incredibly high level to kind of carry this team into it. And the receivers and Aaron Jones gets healthy and everything just kind of gels and mix at the right time. And we have a playoff bound team and it is, it is an amazing accomplishment by not just the players, but Matt LaFleur and kind of the, the, the road. Right, hold on. Right. So you're a player. Are you actually thinking of the coach? Are you there with your teammates? I mean, do you hug? Do you just look at each other and you feel so good? You're so proud or you can't smoke cigars though. They actually did, I guess yesterday. Yeah. What, what's, the emotion, and I ask you because you're generally, I think, reserved and just feeling so good, but I don't know that you talk to other players or around other players. I want to know what that's like. Yeah, I mean, a- after the game, I mean, you're hugging everybody. I mean, you're hugging coaches. You're hugging other players. I mean, probably Goody was down there in the, in the scouting department. Everyone's in there. I mean, it is just a – I mean – Listen, to make the playoffs is a hard thing. Let's just be real. It's it's, it's not easy. It used to be only 16. Did you ever seven. have a year when you were as surprised to make the playoffs as they must have felt as a group? No. I mean, I, okay. I, my, 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 my rookie year, and we barely got in as the 60. I mean, I think that was that would be equal because, you know, we had to win out, I think, the last three or four weeks of the season in 2010 to even get into the playoffs, and we did. So, obviously, that was kind of – a similar situation, but you're celebrating this with everyone, coaches, uh, players, staff, uh, training staff. Cause Hey, the tra- I mean, the training staff, you know, they don't get a lot of credit, but you know what? They get playoff bonuses, baby. And they love it. I mean, it's all about it. I mean, so it is a monumental achievement for this team. And I mean, they, they gotta be so proud of themselves. They have to be. So I know you have to think about the future. How long do you just feel that incredible confidence or just joy or how long does it last? I mean, for me, it was normally 24 hours, 24 hours. And then, uh, oh, come on. It's got to be more than 24 hours. You are so tough. Come on. Hey man, there's there's a team that you're about to go against and you're looking down the barrel of it, right? And and you know what you got coming up. And in this case, especially for Green Bay, on both sides of the ball, you're looking down Dak, Pollard, CD Lamb on the other side, you're looking down it Parsons. It comes up and, that quickly. Yeah. I mean, you you gotta get your head in the right space because playoff football is different, it's faster, it's more physical. Uh, there's more. There's more hanging on every play than there did is. Did you in the know that season. the first year, or did you learn it? And what 
was that learning process? Because everybody oh, tells you yeah. it's different, but that doesn't mean that you know it's different. Yeah, no, I, I, I had to learn it. I learned it probably through the mid-second quarter of that Philly game my rookie year. I, I, I realized this is, on, this is what, different. What can be do- what's, what's different? Come on, the NFL what? is tough. you got to be good to be in it. How much different can it be? How much harder can a player play? A lot harder. Guys, it doesn't seem like guys get tired. Uh, the energy level is up from start to finish. Um, it's more physical because, like I said, more relies on every single play. Momentum swings happen so easily from in the, the very first play, or not? Yes, yes, yes. You you can set the tone of a playoff game within the first two series of a game. And what's funny about that is I've I've experienced the highs of the highs and the lows of the lows in that. I mean, I've obviously Super Bowl and then NFC Championship against Seattle. I understand those pendulum swings. And they can happen at the at the drop of a hat. So that's why playoff football underdog or not seven seed, six seed, you go into a into, in, into a two seed and you shock them in the first, you know, quarter, you know, first two quarters of a game, there's a chance you've got them on the ropes. And then the third quarter, you can deliver a knockout blow. But the thing is, you have to be ready for the momentum shifts because they happen and they happen often during a playoff game. And you can't get too high with the high and too lows with the lows. Wait because a it can how, right can, back how can you explain that to us who have never lived it? How I want the junior high level. I don't, I have no ability to comprehend that, that it's that different or varies that much. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I listen, I wish I could explain it better than I just did, but there's so much that goes on within a play in the regular season. And you're like, okay, well, you know, yeah, I didn't have a great play there or that or something like that. But in a playoff game, a single play can shift the momentum of a game dramatically. One play. Dramatically. One, One play. play. One play. You can feel the air get sucked out of a stadium or the energy level just crank up in a stadium. And that's just – playoff football and that's why it's so awesome to get into it and to experience it that's why i'm so happy this team is getting the opportunity because i'll tell you this much i played in a lot of stadiums in the playoffs dallas is an electric place to play in the playoffs it is electric all right what what Um, does electric mean what explain it's always it's it's a constant buzz it's loud the fans are going nuts there i mean it's what, what, one of the biggest stadiums, if not the biggest stadium in the I league? I don't know. Could you not? Was it more difficult to hear the quarterback? Was it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, see, I mean, Seattle was probably the loudest, but it's just a, a great place to play a playoff game. And obviously in 2016, we had a really good experience there. Obviously we did, you know, with the, Aaron Rodgers throw out to Cook on the sideline, game-winning field goal. I mean, All right, so let's let's game. go to that game because the Packers won it. What's your feeling throughout the game? Early on, we're in good shape, but that things can change all the time. Take us through the mentality that you had through the entire game from the beginning, the ups and downs that you just talked about. Yeah, I mean, I felt like we were in control of that game most of the game. Most of the game, I felt we were in control of that game. We were dictating the tempo and the physicality of it. Then all of a sudden in the fourth quarter, Dallas started to make a run, and they started to claw back into it, and the momentum started to change. We had a couple three and outs, and they capitalized on it. So were you thinking, what the hell's going on? Are you understanding that that's how it goes? What's, What's crossing your mind after the three and outs, given how well you'd been playing? I mean, I'm not, I wasn't, I mean, especially at that point in my career, I wasn't wondering like, oh my gosh, like, are we going to lose this game? I understood that if we continue on this path, the momentum shift is eventually going to, you know, put us in a really bad spot. And obviously we were able to kind of dig ourselves out of it and score some points and get it to the, get it to the point where we had the ball, you know, last. And that was where we wanted to be at the end of the game is didn't matter how much time we had the ball last. I think we may might have had a timeout. I don't even remember because it was such a crazy game. But we felt good enough throughout the game that if we get the ball last, we can win the game, and obviously we did. Um, that's what you kind of experience throughout these playoff games. I, I mean, 
And if you talk to anyone that's played playoff football, like Tausch or any of these guys, they will say the same thing. It is a different beast in all uh, in all categories of the game. And I'm not saying that regular season games are a slouch. They're not. But there's something different about these playoff games um, that just make them, you know, just edge of your seat type stuff. Right. So you're now at the point it's the end of the game. Did you feel like, hey, we can score? Did you f- – I don't know what you feel over a normal game versus a playoff game. Hell, hell yeah, I felt that. <laughs> you bet we did. When I, I remember Erin Andrews, um, she was a sideline reporter for that game. It was Buck and Aikman, and she posted something on Instagram after the game, and it was the offensive line and Aaron in our little corner down there by the twenty, right before um, the ball was kicked off, and like all the place was going nuts, and she was just filming us from you know, behind us and, and seeing all of us and just like the calm energy that we had, you know, before we went out on that field with how many ever seconds left and we got it done. I mean, the belief was that we were going to get it done. That so is that belief. because of your quarterback? Is that because of you believe in the offensive line? Is that because of what you've experienced throughout the season? What? It's got, it's everything. It's obviously the belief in each other, belief in the quarterback, belief in the skill guys, belief in, um, the right play is going to come in the huddle. I mean, it, it's it's a and just the belief that we have enough talent on the field to make this thing happen. That's got to be the, an incredible feeling because it doesn't matter what the score is. It's like we're going to get her done, right? I mean, there was yeah. never a doubt in your mind that you would get it done. No, not a doubt at all. Not a doubt at all. And, and the way that season went, if you remember, I don't we, remember last night. Well, well, I'll tell you. I mean, we were in a bad spot. I think we had lost five or six straight throughout that season, and we need to rattle. We needed to rattle off like six or seven straight to get into the playoffs, and we did. And we rattled a bunch of games off. And um, you know, I, who'd we beat? I think we went to Washington, maybe. Or so, I are you not we aware of what other people are saying about the team, or you don't care? It's just the feeling you have when that group gets together, and like we'll we'll get her done. We're just yeah, gonna get her done. Yeah, I could care less. I, I could care less what anyone said about us or what pundits were picking what. It, it didn't matter to me. I mean, I, you know, the feeling you have in a huddle and in a locker room and in a team when you truly all believe in each other, I mean, defeats all that. Now, I get it. You lose some games, and that's the way it but goes. That's got to feel so good. It's empowering. It really is. It's, it's empowering, and it's a, and that's what a true team is, and that's what I'm. Like, I'm not in this locker room, but I'm feeling like this team believes that. I feel like they believe that you see the way they play. You see the way they stick together. Um, everything's been stacked against this team from the start. It's been negative from the start. And here we are. They get in, seventh seed, and everything's in front of them. Everything's it's, it's one at a time. And you know what? I get going to Dallas is hard. But you know what? Detroit almost did it. And they should have done it. Uh, obviously, I think they should have. They got they got hosed. But there's evidence that it can be done. You just have to go in there and, and be ready to execute at the highest level. Know there's going to be ups and downs, and just stick to the plan. Stick with each other. Stick with the plan, and and you know just be ready for a battle because that's what it's going to be. Quarter two with Brian Bulaga. I may say even less next. More of the Homer Hour coming up next on 94.5 ESPN. No accidents, but a lot of brake lights as we look around Milwaukee. We're going to start with 94 westbound is backed up all the way from the stadium interchange into the Marquette. Basically, as soon as you get on the highway, you're going to be backed up. 43 northbound coming up out of the Marquette is slow all the way up to Locust, almost to Keefe. And then 43 southbound still slow, but it's actually now only south of Capitol that you're going to start seeing those brake lights as you head on into downtown. And 894 westbound through the Mitchell interchange is slow through the Mitchell all the way past the 35th Street. Traffic is brought to you by James Imaging Systems, your local document imaging partner. Visit jamesimaging.com. Taking a look at your forecast for tonight, that snowstorm is going to be developing a low of 33. By Tuesday, it's here, heavy snow, possibly some rain by the lake, 5 to 9 inches of snow inland, 2 to 5 by the lakeside, a high of 37. From the WTMJ Traffic Center, I'm Wyatt Barmar Pooley on 94.5 ESPN. The stage is set. It's Michigan and Washington battling for the title. This is Boucher Automotive College Football Championship Week. 
Tune into our coverage all week long and catch the game right here on 94.5 ESPN on January 8th. With 16 new car brands, over 35 pre-owned brands, and 5,000 vehicles in stock, Boucher Automotive is where you'll find your next ride. It's Boucher Automotive College Football Championship Week on 94.5 ESPN. There are many reasons to choose document imaging technology from James Imaging Systems. Chris McLean, co-owner of DBAT Brookfield, the baseball and softball training facility, had his reasons. I think the biggest thing, the important things for me, are effective communication and timely response. James Imaging Systems, Kiyosera, Kiyosera copiers, Kiyosera network printers, Kiyosera color systems, and the James team that works with you to provide the business technology to help you thrive. Honestly, Candy had a lot to do with it. Candy, your James Imaging Systems sales representative. Candy built great rapport with our general manager right out of the gate. It helps that they're a local business, we're a local business as well. James Imaging Systems, effective communication and local responsiveness. They're a partner. James Imaging is a partner, not a vendor. Kia Sera. Kia Sera from James Imaging Systems. Call 262-781-7700 or visit jamesimaging.com. James Imaging Systems, your local business technology partner. Ready to conquer the Midwest's premier winter playground? Then start planning a visit to Granite Peak. With over 200 acres of skiable terrain, Granite Peak has something for everyone. From beginners to seasoned pros, park skiers to mogul fanatics, and everything in between. Soar to new heights on their state-of-the-art chairlifts and warm up in the cozy historic chalet with roaring fireplaces and stunning views. A legendary winter adventure begins at Granite Peak. Don't miss out. Visit SkiGranitePeak.com to book your winter vacation now. And for more information, Granite Peak. Legendary winters, legendary fun that to-do list you have needs one more thing chill it's an easy thing to do just crack open an ice cold coors light and chill take the afternoon off and binge watch anything go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours who's counting anyways or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week whatever you do do it with a coors light Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2020 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. What's better than free? How about play free all year? This January at Pottawatomie Casino Hotel, Milwaukee, you can win over $2,000 in reward play every month, all year long. Just play your favorite games to earn prize drawing entries. Then stop by each Thursday night in January to see if you're a winner. $400,000 in prizes is up for grabs. Over 40 winners each week. Yeah, free is for me. More info at PaysBig.com. Must be 21 years old and a club member to play. This is the Homer Hour on 94.5 ESPN. Victory Monday is brought to you by Palermo's Pizza. Wisconsin's hometown pizza with delicious brands like Palermo's, Connie's, Urban Pie, and Screaming Sicilian. Palermo's has your game day covered. They have every day covered. Find Palermo's in your local grocer's freezer. Talking with the doctor of football, Brian Bulak. I just want to know, watching this game, did you think of a game? Did you think of any point in your career? Or am I making that up? You know, this game, and, and I, I, I get it. It, it. They only scored 17 points, and you need to be able to score more points. Yeah, the defense and, won the game. I'm, everybody else yeah. says to me, no, no. They they given what they did offensively, they should have scored seventeen, but they more than seventeen, but they didn't. And if they would have lost the game, everybody would have talked about all the things that went bad, and they did lose the game because the defense held the Bears to nine points. Yeah, I mean, it's my you theory. Said, you couldn't have said it any better. Nine points is nine points. You're going like, to win almost every game unless you're uh, uh, you're going to you know you you hold the opponents to nineteen nine points. You're going to win almost every game. Correct. That is absolutely correct. So, you know, this game reminded me a lot of, like, and I'm not trying to sound corny or anything, but the win and get in game that we had against the Bears in 2010. Yes. Yep. I believe I believe we only scored 10 points in that game. I think it was something like that. It might have been only, and might I think it was 10. And we beat the Bears, I think, 10 to 7 or 10 to 6. I don't know what it was. It was something like that. So it Where Rodgers made, ta- made the tackle on... Uh... Uh, who's the linebacker, right? He stole the ball or intercepted or whatever he did. Or Erlacher, right that, was, that, 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 that was in the NFC Championship. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. I should just. Uh, I should have not even tried to uh, comment. I can't remember <laughs> yesterday. Go ahead. <laughs> but it reminded me a lot of that. And, and you have to give credit where credit is due. And 
the defense played at an incredibly high level. Uh, and I understand that people really, you know, they want to give credit to Jordan Love. Hey, he's due credit. He played a great game. Aaron Jones played a great game. Reed, great game. Wicks, scored great, like only 17 points. Yeah, scored only 17 points, and the defense only gave up nine. That is a great performance that kind of that kept them in it. Obviously, the missed field goal right away, right? I mean, everyone was kind of – I mean, I was one of them. I was like, oh, my gosh, here we go. This is, this is the way this is going to be. And then the defense, you know – they settled in. They, they, I think they got a stop, got the ball back to the offense, and away we were, we were going. So, um, hats off to Joe Barry, right? Like, and you know, people. Yes. Are, I mean, I'm not saying. I don't that care they, what you think of Joe Barry. I don't care yeah. what. But this game, they won because of the defense. Yep, I agree. Five sacks. Yeah. I mean, great game. I mean, we're. Just getting after Fields the entire game, five sacks, probably could have been eight. I mean, just a fantastic performance um, up and down, you know. So how aware are you of the defense in a game like this? You talked about it because that's my fascination is you lived it. So are you, are you, do you not watch the defense because you're focused on the offense and when we get back on the field or how much are you watching going, dude, our defense is kicking butt. Yeah, no, you're definitely watching. You, you're you're definitely watching on our defense is playing really good right now. We can't. All we need to do is put up some points because our defense is just they're playing out of their minds right now. So let's think about putting up points, no matter that's field goal or touchdown, and let's put them in good positions. Let's not turn it over and put them, you know, start them at the twenty yard line or something crazy. Let's just put them in good positions. Let's score points. And, you know, let these guys just go to work because they did. And, and last night, you know, Matt LaFleur knew the way the defense was playing. He knew. He he was aware of it. And, you know, when you're on the – I mean, I, when I was on the sideline, I always watched the defense. I wanted to see what they were doing. I wanted to see how they were playing. You can kind of gauge how the game's going to go as well, um, kind of knowing on offense what you're going to need to do and, and how, you know, the performance you guys are going to have to have. And when a defense goes out there and plays a game like that, you know, on offense, we just need to make sure we score points, whatever, whatever that looks like, we need to do it. And that's kind of the way the Packers played yesterday. I'm not, they should have scored more. I get it. Like, but they scored what they scored, but the offense did enough. They did enough. And the defense was, was the star of the show. (sighs) You got to be smiling. I'm not seeing you. I I know you're smiling. I know how happy you feel knowing how happy those players on the team feel, right? Absolutely. And the, you know, I like I said I I I still know some guys that are in that locker room and and understand kind of what's been going on this season. Obviously, I'm, you know, friends with a lot of the coaches as well and and things like that. So, you just know by hearing them talk and and throughout a season, especially this season, you know, the roller coaster that it was. And for them to be able to come out on the other side of this, you know, punching their ticket to the tournament, I'm just so happy for them. I'm just so happy for them because, you know, as a Packers fan, you didn't know, you had no expectations this season. The the expectations were, well, we're going to find out if Jordan Love is the guy. We're going to find out, you know, if these young wide receivers are anything. We don't really have any expectation. And two and five, it's over. There's no one. Yeah. I don't even think you did. Thought they were going to make the playoffs. No, I didn't. I didn't. And I'm so happy I'm wrong. But like, it's it was it was so bleak looking at one point in the season. They were like, man, like the questions were swirling. Is Jordan Love the guy? I mean, are we going to have to go? and try to get a quarterback? Are we going to have to try to go trade up and get more receivers? What are we going to have to do? And all of a sudden, it just turns around, and they start winning, and they start performing at a high level. And uh, like I said, I, I can't even explain how happy I am for them because it is such a great achievement that you and I talked about it a bunch. If they got eight wins, we would have thought of that as a win. For the season, right? Like, if they get eight wins... No, it's the most surprising season ever for the Packers. Now, I've been following them since the 80s, and there's no there's no comparison to being where they were at 2-5 and five, and then the quarterback being young and where he was playing and 
since then, he's been arguably the best quarterback in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, think of, I mean, as Packer fans, think about that. You just went from Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers, and now you have this young kid that when you drafted him, and you kind of knew he'd be waiting no, in the wings. No, neither of them did what he just did and has done in their first year as a starter, right? Neither of them. Neither yeah, did it. Correct. I don't mean that he's going to be better than those two, but neither did what he's done in their first correct. year as a starter. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, look at numbers alone, right? Let's look at numbers alone. I mean, you get, he's had the best numbers out of any of them. Obviously, Favre was playing in a different era of the way football was played at that point in time. But regardless, um, his numbers were better than Aaron's. I mean, if you want to just go true statistics, that that is what it is. You can't. And I don't believe any of them. 18 touch passes and one interception. No. You, yeah. You can't be incredible. that. You can't be that good. You can't. And he was. No. And he has. Yeah. Been. And he did it. And the fact that now the Green Bay Packers, the organization, the fans know that we got a guy. We have our guy that is going to be our franchise quarterback for the next who knows how many years is such a relieving feeling. And you I mean, played with a great one. What of all you watched? When you watched Jordan Love against the Bears, what what stood out to you? What impressed you the most? The accuracy of his throwing. I mean, that was one thing that we were all so worried about early on in the season. Right now, he's not accurate. His, his completion percentage is down. He can't throw the deep ball. He can't. You know, there were a lot of things swirling around. Like I said in the last segment, every time he threw the ball, I thought it was going to be completed. Every time. I mean, he had some... Which is exactly how you felt with Rodgers, right? Exactly how I felt with Rodgers. It's exactly how I felt with Aaron. And the fact that it's happening again with (laughs) again is just incredible. And I mean, the the four-leaf clover that the organization's got is incredible because... I mean, there's teams still starving for a quarterback that haven't had one for 30-plus years, and they're still starving for one. And this team goes from one to the next to the next, and it's just – it's incredible. And some of the throws he made off his back foot kind of just in the end zone, the, some of these tight windows was just incredible. The anticipation, some of the balls to read were, were incredible throws, um, just stuff that I was used to seeing, you know, 12 do. And and and, it, and that is what is so crazy in all this thing is that he got to learn from Aaron, obviously. And a lot and obviously Jordan loves his own player. And we don't know what his ceiling is or what he's gonna end up being or how good he's gonna end up being, but you see so many similarities that you can't help but let your mind go there. Like, can can he be just as good as Aaron or better? You you you, you know, it's hard to tell right now, and I'm never gonna put you know, the cart before the horse here, but it's just such a cool feeling and a cool time to be a Packers fan because the the possibilities are endless. And that is a good feeling to have if you love this organization. Yes, he may not be as good as Aaron Rodgers or Brett Favre, but he has done what neither of those did in his first year as starter. Third quarter. I'll try to listen better. Next. The Homer Hour is back after this on 94.5 ESPN. A lot of slowdowns in the stadium interchange pretty much everywhere you're going. If you're headed out on 94 westbound, you're going to be slow all the way through the stadium interchange. If you're headed up on northbound 43, you're going to be slow all the way to Locust. 43 southbound, we're still seeing some delays, but it's not looking as bad as it usually does at this time of day. For Brown Deer to downtown, currently a 15-minute ride. That's a four-minute delay. Those delays are concentrated pretty much all around Capitol Drive up past Hampton. And two more quick slowdowns, one on 41 southbound south of Silver. Silver Spring, just a little bit of a tap on the brakes there. And 894 Westbound backed up from about 35th all the way through the Mitchell Interchange. Take a look at your forecast for tonight. Snow moving in after 10 p.m., a low of 33. Tuesday, we're going to see that heavy snow. 5 to 10 inches inland, 2 to 5 lakeside, a high of 37. From the WTMJ Traffic Center, I'm Wyatt Barmar-Pooley on 94.5 ESPN.
Hey, it's Gary Olson here for Wisconsin Indoor Golf Center. Looking for that midday escape? Or maybe you want to impress a client? No matter the season, rain, snow, or shine, Wisconsin Indoor Golf Center is open for you. A top-tech, cutting-edge golf experience that gives you the chance to play legendary courses. Wisconsin Indoor Golf Center simulators, entertainment, and best Bloody Marys make it feel like summer all year round. Just $35 an hour gets you a round and puts that summer feel back in your life. Book your bay at Wisconsin Indoor Golf Center. Here in Wisconsin, one name is synonymous with fantastic frozen pizza, Palermo's. For almost 60 years, Palermo's has focused on feeding Wisconsin families. And though Palermo's has grown a lot since 1964, they're still family-owned. They're still proud to call Milwaukee home. And they're still committed to making the best frozen pizza possible. From their new and improved rising crust pizzas to their guilt-free primo thin pies, Palermo's has a delicious slice for every appetite. Find Palermo's in your local grocer's freezer food aisle. Palermo's. Flavor is our family's business. Hey, this is Jen Latta from Jen, Gabe & Chewy. One of the best decisions I made recently was getting an infrared sauna from Good Health Saunas. They're a local business that's been around for two decades based right in Appleton and Waukesha. Good Health Saunas are easy to install, cost as little as 25 cents a day, and include a true lifetime warranty. Even firefighters all across the country trust Good Health Saunas for sweating smoke out of their skin after fighting fire. Learn more at goodhealthsaunas.com. That's goodhealthsaunas.com. Get your game on at the Island Resort and Casino with first-round picks of your favorite slots and table games. Watch your team compete on big screens in Team XC's Sports Bar or the Sports Illustrated Sportsbook Room. Yes, you can bet the spread, parlays, futures, and more with Sports Illustrated Sportsbook at Island Resort and Casino, your place to bet on sports. To book a game-time getaway at the Island, call 800-682-6040 today. At Kessler's Diamonds, we know you're too busy to go shopping from store to store, too busy to listen to a bunch of sales pitches, too busy to negotiate. This is Monica Kessler. I'm going to tell you another reason why I like working at Kessler's. Are you ready? At Kessler's, we don't negotiate. We think it's unfriendly and dishonest, so we've never done it. Would you ask your friend to pay a higher price than what you were truly willing to accept? Kessler's is a 100% employee-owned company, and the owners insist that everyone gets the lowest price. Don't believe me? Put it to the test. Go to any of our Kessler's locations and ask to buy something for $1 less than the price on the tag. One of our owners is going to offer to find you something else at that $1 lower price, but the item you want costs $1 more, period. Kessler's is the face of friendship and fairness and integrity. You never have to negotiate at Kessler's. And that's comforting, especially when you're in a hurry. You're listening to the Homer Hour on 94.5 ESPN. Fisco Auto Body. Fisco. Because you like them and then you like me. Here's how it works. You listen to me, Fisco Auto Body on Forest Home in Franklin, and then you go, then, man, they're great. Then you have an auto body place forever. When those things happen, they're a pain, but not when you know you can go to Fisco and everything will be great. The family business owned since 1931. It's not what they do, it's who they are. By the time they've been doing it for you, they've been doing it so long, it's so easy. That's why they're that good. Fisco Auto Body on Forest Home in Franklin. You like them, then you like me. I admit, I tell you about them. So it helps my reputation. Homer, how did you know this? I'm that smart. Fisco, Fisco, Fisco to remember the name. Packers went over the Bears. All I want to do for an entire hour is to listen to Brian Bulaga to try to explain what it has to feel like to be in that locker room. And I don't think that you ever experienced to the same degree as this locker room because you were never as surprised to make the playoffs as this team must be. No. I mean... Again, the closest thing that I can maybe relate it to is the 2010 season. I was a rookie. I didn't really know what to expect. So, you know, it was just kind of, hey, we're playing games. But you knew the team was good from the day that season started. Yeah, the team was good. It was loaded with talent, tons of good players. There were a lot of knowns at that point, right? Like, we knew we had a lot of good players. This team, this year, we did not know what we had. We, I mean, we, we had no idea what was in that locker room or the talent that was yeah, going to eventually I knew. show us I knew that. they weren't this good. That's what I knew. Yeah, yeah that, that's what I'm saying. I had no idea. I had no idea. And, you know, as the season went on, 
you know, you didn't know what you had. And obviously here we are playoff bound and we know we got some studs, but the, the truth of the matter was every time we made the playoffs, like we kind of expected it, right? Like, I mean, that was the stand, that was the bare minimum was to make the playoffs. That was always the bare minimum. So I, I, and you know, if you were to ask the guys in the locker room right now, they would all probably tell you, yeah, we expected to make it. We expected this, but did they really, I don't know. (laughs) I mean, if you put hooked them up to a lie detector test, I would imagine some of them would fail, but as the season grew on, I'm sure, especially the last six weeks, that belief started to grow and you started to see the way they were playing and you could tell that they all felt it. And and, and that is a, a powerful thing. And, and obviously, you know, last night and I get it. We talked about it. You know, the offense did what they did, you know, they did enough. And then the defense, while all the negativity is being poured on the defense, they go out there and essentially, I mean, it's, it wasn't a blank, but they blanked the Bears, right? I mean, three field goals, they – they no Bears really had – no Bears offensive no, The Packers players. messed up. If they'd have lost the game, we would have talked and go, man, all these things had to go wrong from the missed field goal to the fumble to the end of the first half. And the reality is it didn't matter. As you know, when you're a good team, bad things can happen and you still win because you're that much better. A hundred percent. I mean, they are – I mean – much better team. And, you know, obviously the missed field goal and the fumble and that, you know, the little blunder at the end of the half that Wicks is going to learn from, right. He, he's going to learn from that. You know, it, it's happened to a lot of receivers. He's not the first guy that's ever happened to, um, but he'll learn from that. And even with all that, that took place, I, I was never at one point sitting on my couch going, man, the bears may win this. Not, not, not once. I, I felt good about this game from the start to the finish that Green Bay was going to get the job done. And obviously... Because you didn't think the Bears could score enough. Or they're going to get a field goal. I mean, you had enough confidence in the defense. There have been other games where the defense... No, oh, yeah. Wasn't yeah, I mean, at I, that level. Correct. I mean, with the way the defense was playing, I knew the Bears couldn't score enough. And I re- and I truly believe in... And I, I mean, obviously the points didn't show, but I knew if Green if it came to a point where green Bay needed a touchdown. They could go down and touchdown. score. Yep. Yeah. They, they would get a touchdown. So like, I never felt uncomfortable watching that game. I mean, obviously I was angry when they missed the field goal. Cause that's kind of been something that's been rearing its ugly head. I mentioned that earlier in the year and it's kind of, uh, I just, I don't like it because it seems like it happens too often. Um, but even after the miss, I still felt really good about it. Right. Like, it, it, the, the the team and the way they've been playing, and obviously we're not used to the defense playing that way, but the way the defense was showing they were playing, you just never, never had a doubt. Never had a doubt. Talk I'm sure you the, didn't either. I know. Sure uh, I either. just thought there were events that would have occurred where, like, at the end of the first half, you're thinking they just gave away six points. They should have had six more. Uh, so I'm thinking if they if they lose this game or the Bears do something, you're going to feel terrible because they're the better team. They know it. The Bears know it. But enough weird things have happened that happen sometimes in a game you lose. But to the credit of the Packers, they just they just didn't allow that to happen. Yeah, they just stuck to it. They just stuck. They stuck to their plan. They stuck to the process. And they just. I mean, you watch the. I mean, they didn't present really any threat. I mean, a couple. Passes the DJ Moore. I think he had like 64 yards or something like that. Received like there was just no threat. Like for the most, you know what it was. There was never a fear in that game that the Joe Barry defense was going to show up. The defense that gave up 363 yards rushing to to Philadelphia. The defense that made uh, unknown quarterback superstars. The game. The team that gave up 30 points to Carolina that hadn't that didn't score a point in the next two games. There was never a point in that game where I thought that defense showed up. Nope. Nope. And 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 that was from start to finish, too. Yep. Right? Like, I mean, it was start to finish. They got and pressure. We, All right. I want to get to I haven't because I've been fascinated with what you feel like having lived it. But the offensive line has changed everything. Tauscher talked about it after the game. And that is, I know you're watching it because they're able to do whatever they want. And the ability of Jordan Love to see and feel comfortable is totally 
the result of the limited pressure that he feels and how comfortable he gets to be during most of those passing plays. Yeah, I mean, the O-line is playing at a really high level right now. They're playing at a high level, and Jordan Love is comfortable back there. Yeah. He is ve- he's very comfortable back there, and the pocket that's being created, um, the lanes that they're creating in pass pro – when Jordan Love does need to step up and out of the pocket, are enormous. So that's a credit to the tackles, right? The tackles normally create those B gap lanes where they run their edge rushers high and wide. I don't know what that means. It means they run them around the quarterback and they don't allow the DNs to retrace. A lot of the times you see it when tackles are blocking DNs and the quarterback tries to step up out of the B gap, the DN retraces and gets a cheap sack or something like that. These tackles do a good job of staying latched on and making sure. So that they left can't tackle retrace. is no longer a problem. Walker's the answer. Uh, I don't know if he's the answer. I'm not, you're, don't put don't put words in my mouth. Don't put words in didn't. my mouth. I asked you. <laughs> I'm not saying. But he's, he's the played answer. pretty well, right? And he's getting most of the time now, correct? Oh, he's getting all the time. Yeah, yeah. And he has played well. He has played well. He did a he did a great job last night. I thought he, I, he and Tom played great. Like I said. Montez Sweat, I, I don't, I don't think he was on the stat sheet. Like I said, maybe a tackle, maybe a tackle for a loss. Um, I'm not. I'd have to go back and check. But I mean, they kept those guys, you know, in check. That defense that's really been carrying the Bears. Uh, they they kept them away from Love. And again, Aaron Jones, 22 carries, 111 yards. They controlled the ball. They controlled the ground game. I mean. It, it was a dominant performance. I mean, seven to ten on third down. You can't go seven to ten on third down unless the O line's doing their job. If the O line is, if the O line's getting beat, the third down numbers are well below fifty percent. Kind of like the Bears. I mean, we'll just put it that way. So, uh, a credit to this group. I mean, they have grown. There's been a lot of adversity through this offense. Without line. Bakhtiari. Yeah. Without Bakhtiari, I mean, and I thought I would never say that because I know how good Dave is, um, and and how you know how good it is to have a left tackle that you could just leave out there and he just does his job and you never have to worry about sliding to him or chipping for him. And I mean, it's it's a really you know relaxing thing for a quarterback. But they've been able to do that without Dave. Guys in and out of the lineup, rotating players. Uh, Sean Ryan got a lot of snaps again yesterday, and he played really well. Yeah, he's he played, and we, we know what's going on there. He's the guy for next yeah. year. And then. Yeah, and he's playing really well. But so they won't it, play him if he's not playing well. Well, I mean, yeah, no. I mean, again, this is kind of like what we were talking about early in the season. Not early, but kind of later third quarter of the season where they were rotating Yash and, and Walker, and it was kind of whoever had the hot hand, and then they finally stuck with – uh, Walker, Walker and, he's, yeah. and it's and it's been paid off because he's been playing really good. I don't think they're going to do that going to the playoffs. I think they're going to keep the same rotation they got going mm. at guard. And obviously, if one guy's playing that much better, they're going to stick with that guy. But if you're looking at the the snap totals, they're pretty even right now between Running and Ryan. They're pretty even, and I think they're going to continue to do that unless again something crazy happens throughout a game where like hey. You know, Ryan or Running's playing that much better than the other guy, then I think they'll go with the hot hand. We don't have to get to Dallas yet. Victory Monday brought to you by Palermo's Pizza, Wisconsin's homegrown pizza, with delicious brands like Palermo's Connie's Urban Pie and Screaming Sicilian. Palermo's has your game day covered. They got every day covered. Find Palermo's in your local grocer's freezer. Fourth quarter with the doctor of football, Brian Bulaga, next. More of the Homer Hour coming up next on 94.5 ESPN. Football guy. What the hell happened to Bucky on your hat? Football guy. A lot of wear and tear for old B. <laughs> coming at it from different views. I'm just saying he's, he's well worn. I mean, his, his face is missing. Okay, well, it's probably time for me to freshen that up. I, Bucky wants to flip you off right now. Wildey and Tausch, presented by Palo Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Also sponsored by Coors Light. Weekdays 9 to noon on 94.5 ESPN. And available wherever you get your podcasts with Wisconsin On Demand. 
Let's get the latest from Lambo. This is your green and gold fix on 94.5 ESPN. Brought to you by Zbart of Greater Milwaukee. Want that mirror finish on your car? You need Z Gloss by Zbart. Z Gloss is a three layer ceramic coating that not only gives your car that mirror finish, it protects it from everything that Mother Nature can throw at it. Visit zbart.com for more information. Behind a 300 yard performance from Jordan Love, who also threw two touchdowns, and Aaron Jones going for 100 yards rushing for the third straight game. The Packers beat the Bears 17-9 to on Sunday and are headed to the postseason in Jordan Love's first year under center. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone knew what we were capable of. You know, all the games we lost were, were close games that we knew there was little things that we could fix that would put us over the hump to win those games. It'll be the Packers taking on Mike McCarthy and the Cowboys in Dallas on Sunday. That one, a 3.30 kickoff. This has been your green and gold fix on 94.5 ESPN. Brought to you by Zbart of Greater Milwaukee. Hello, Windows and Doors of Wisconsin present your Badger Minute. Here's Alex Strofe. This Badger Minute brought to you by UW Credit Union. For over 90 years, UW Credit Union has helped Wisconsinites achieve their financial goals at every stage of life, offering great rates for greater possibilities. Join today at uwcu.org. With the USFL and the XFL merging into the United Football League, the league held a dispersal draft last week. Former Badgers linebacker and ESPN Wisconsin host Chris Orr was selected fourth overall by the Birmingham Stallions. Orr played the last two seasons for the New Jersey Generals in the USFL, but with the leagues merging, the Generals were one of eight total teams that are no longer. Orr had 81 tackles last season for the Generals, which was third in the entire league. The full UFL schedule will be released next week. Badger Minutes on ESPN Wisconsin are brought to you by Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Schedule an appointment online today at PellaWI.com. You can make the decision right now to get lasting relief from that awful joint pain for 2024. Don't go another year compromising because of that pain in your knees or your shoulders. Call QC Kinetics now. QC Kinetics is the nation's leader in regenerative, non-surgical pain relief. Your body has what it takes to restore and repair that damaged joint tissue. And QC Kinetics can make it happen. No drugs, no surgery, no downtime. Hi, this is Brad Nortman. The future of pain treatments has arrived. Hundreds of board-certified QC Kinetics Kinetics providers have treated tens of thousands of satisfied patients all over America. People with back pain, hip pain, any pain associated with arthritis or an injury. This is not a band-aid. This is a revolutionary treatment that can get you moving again. Get your life back. This is the year that you can decide to fight against that pain. Take the first step and call QC Kinetics now. Get a free consultation scheduled today. Call 414-285-3474. 414-285-3474. That's 414-285-3474. Join the Milwaukee Panther basketball teams as they face off against two Horizon League opponents this week. Friday, the Panther men's basketball team takes on Cleveland State. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. at Panther Arena. Then the Panther women's basketball team closes out the action against Youngstown State. On Saturday, tip-off is at noon at the Klotchy Center. Visit mkepanthers.com for this year's schedule, fan promotions, and to select your seats. That's Panther men's basketball on Friday at 7 and women's basketball at noon on Saturday. Panther Athletics. For the MKE. Welcome back to the Homer Hour on 94.5 ESPN. The Homer Hour as I listen to the doctor of football, Brian Bulaga. Our discount liquor Twitter poll question, will the Packers beat the Cowboys on Sunday? 48% say yes, 52% say no. I say no. They're not beating the Cowboys. They're unbelievable at home. But more importantly, and I ask this to the doctor of football, I guarantee you the Packers think they're going to win. They believe they're going to win because they believe, starting with, we got the better quarterback in this game. Yeah. They definitely, I mean, they believe in that. But maybe it doesn't mean that much as far as having the better quarterback as I think it does. Does that play that big a deal to the heads of all the players? Yes or no? Yeah, I mean, I think it gives guys belief that the quarterback, the the he's the centerpiece of every team. I mean, there's no team in the playoffs right now that doesn't have a quarterback that's not playing at a high level. Um, I can't think of one off the top of my head. But I'm thinking, all right, whatever. We know this. They can't stop our offense if these guys are good. And I don't care how many points we're behind, or I don't care how many points we're a dog. But, again, I'm inventing that. I don't know if that's what the players actually think. 
No, I mean, guys definitely have that belief that we got a guy that we know can can put points up or, or bring us from behind if, if we do what we need to do. Obviously, in playoff games, there's more than just the quarterback. There's a lot that goes into these games, and I understand. I think the Packers are right now at seven and a half point dogs, yep. which, hey, you know what? That, I, I actually like that. For I mean, Keep making them bigger underdogs. Do you even? All right, all right. Here's my other question. Do you even? Are you even aware of that as a player? Do the coaches bring it up? Do they like to say no one believes in us? We're seven and a half point underdogs, or is that just what we say outside the inner circle? No, I mean you know that you're an underdog going into the game. You know you're a dog going into the game, but you don't really talk about like seven and a half point three. You know, no, that doesn't really get discussed. I mean, you. I mean. That locker room knows they're going into Dallas. Dallas, I think, I don't know if Dallas has lost a game at home this year. They know that they're. They have not. Go, yeah, they're they're the seven seed going to a two seed. They know where they're at. With but if you're confident, do you think of that other stuff? I mean, I if I was on this team, I'd go. I, I don't care. We can beat them. That's all I know. We can beat them. I'm not making this stuff up. We can outscore them. Our defense, I hope it'll be good enough, but it's been good the last... I, but I don't know what the players think. I'm just yeah, making this listen, up. Listen, this is this is a tournament, man. This is one and, one and done. So, like, anyone can beat anyone on any given Sunday. So, like, this is why the NFL playoffs are so awesome because a seven seed can go to a two seed and beat them. Right, they can do right. it. What do you think if you're an offensive player, and what are they thinking? Recognizing their defense has been inconsistent, but pretty good recently. Does that does that enter their mind? What do you, as an offensive player, I haven't gone back and looked at the defenses you had. Does uh, we just? Know, I mean, offensively, we just know we got to score points because we because you right. just assume you just assume Dallas is going to score. Because they're, not, they're that good, not because your defense is in, is inconsistent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because they're good, right? They're a good offense. They got a lot of weapons. They can hurt you in a bunch of different ways. They're a good team, so you know that they're going to score points. So you look at it from an offensive player standpoint: is hey, we need touchdowns. We need points. We 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 have to keep this thing as close as we possibly can. So do you can. say you need twenty? Do you say you need thirty? Do you put it in a points thing number now, or not? No, it's all relative to the game, to what's going on in the game, right? Like there, there, there can't be a point number that you have in your head that you need to hit going into a game. You just know we we got to score and we got to set the we got to set the tempo for it, and we, we, whatever they do, we can match it. And that's kind of the mentality that you have. And you just hey, all we need is our defense to give us a stop because we believe that we can go out and score a touchdown or kick a field goal or whatever it is. That's kind of the, the mentality. Right, we you're the have. right tackle on this team. What are you thinking right now in terms of your likelihood ability to beat the Dallas Cowboys? I feel good about it. We got into the tournament. No one thought we would. I feel good about that. We can get it done. I have belief in the guys. I got belief in just not myself as a player, but as the entire team that we can get it done. And that's the way I'd be thinking going in. Because of how you've been playing recently or why? Yeah, because what we've put on tape, what we've put on tape recently shows that we can go out there and get this done. No one else believes in us, but we do. You will not be surprised if, or you will not be shocked if they beat Dallas. No, I won't be shocked. You'd be surprised, be maybe? I'd be surprised. Would you be surprised, or is that too strong a word? Uh, not surprised. I mean, I I wouldn't be. I, again, I'm not shocked if they get it done. All right. I'm not shocked if they get the it done. The Dr. Football, back with him on Thursday. Man, this is fun. Next. Potawatomi, Greg Matzik, and Gary Ellison. They'll probably be better. We were good, but I, I think they'll be better. <laughs> Keeping an eye on some slowdowns around the system. 41 southbound is slow from North Avenue down to the Zoo Interchange. And coming out of the Zoo Interchange, 94 eastbound is slow leading up to the Zoo Interchange. There's also been a crash reported on the ramp from Hawley Road onto 94 eastbound. Looks like it's not causing any extra delays, but it is something to keep an eye out for. 94.